thank you to all the people who responded to my question at the end of my last video when I asked for suggestions of what I'm supposed to do now with this video thing. Um, it's exactly one year today that uh, my YouTube channel has been in existence on May 26th. Today is also a new moon. There was a uh, full lunar eclipse uh, in the morning. any rate, I'm starting afresh in my second year of vlogging, or whatever you call it these days, <laughs> making my little videos. Um, and what I've decided to do is just sort of random videos on different subjects. I got a lot of really good um, ideas from several people and I hope you will keep them flowing to me. Uh, the comment section of this video is a great place to put suggestions for future videos. Any things you'd like for me to talk about. <laughs> I seem to be pretty good at talking. Um, so, today's video will be about something that I think is missing in initiation into Hermetics. I really think this should be added to the curriculum for someone going through the process of self-initiation in this day and age especially. It has to do with the emotions. Um, from a hermetic perspective and in the context of working with initiation in hermetics and uh, self-change, self-crafting. Um, the work with the uh, uh, emotion should be right in the beginning with the uh, work with the, the black and white mirrors because the emotions play a big part in our character traits. Um, essentially uh, the character is how the astral body, the astral aspect of our being, manifests itself. It manifests as our character, as our personality. Uh, the way that the astral body expresses itself is through our emotions. So this is the two aspects of the astral body for us as human beings. Our character, this is how we manifest ourselves astrally, this is why it's the astral uh, exercises uh, in the uh, self-transformation of the character. Um, but, you know, along with that should be uh, touching on this other aspect of the astral uh, experience for us. We experience our astral bodies through our emotions. This is what the astral body feels like, you know, physically feels like, are the strong emotions that we experience. We sometimes feel them here in the chest, or in the gut, or in the head, etc. This is, this is how the astral body feels. So, um, I would propose several exercises to be done. Now, the emotions sort of occur uh, in three ways, shall we say. There are three types of emotional um, experience. The first is resonant emotions. Uh, we see someone who's very happy and we begin to feel happy. You know, we encounter someone who's really depressed we begin to feel depressed. These are sort of viral emotions that spread from person to person. And we experience those constantly. We are being influenced by the world around us. This is what astral is about. It's about this interaction with, with other, with um, the rest of the universe, okay? So the first type here is the resonant emotions. Um, the second type is the reactive emotions. Um, they can be either resonant or a dissonant, shall we say. So I see someone beating on their dog, I get really angry. This is a dissonant emotion. You know, it's a reaction 
reaction to something external that has occurred, that I witness, that I perceive. I have an emotional response to it. Um, this is different than the resonant emotions, you know, because it's, uh, those just happen naturally. Um, the reactionary emotions we have some control over. Um, we have some control over the resonant too, but it, that's not as critical at this point. The main issue here with uh, the reactive emotions is, you know, it's our reaction. They, the emotion is coming from us and externalizing it because of something we've perceived. The third kind is emotions that we create ourselves. Uh, we'll be thinking uh, sort of uh, thoughts about uh, past experiences that were unpleasant, say, and we'll get depressed. We'll think about it some more. We'll get more depressed. These are emotions that are often uh, repetitive, uh, habitual. Uh, this, these are the emotions that... Um, uh, that form um, so much of the character. Uh, they play the biggest part in the character. The emotions that we take on just by habit and by custom, okay? So, we have three types in the resonant emotions, which we sort of adopt. Uh, the reactionary emotions, reactions to different things that we perceive and happen and then the uh, self-caused emotions. And self-caused emotions is what we'll play with the most in, in the work with the emotions. So the very first thing to do in this work is what I also recommend for doing the sensory concentration exercises, the creation of the sensory impressions. First thing to do is to, like with the sensory impressions, go out and feel things. You know, really feel something. Really smell that flower. Really use the sense itself that we're trying to create with. And the same applies to the emotions. First, we have to really experience our emotions. You know, too often we, we dampen down, especially as men, we hide our emotions, we suppress our emotions, we're supposed to be stoic, and all that bullshit, we suppress. We never really truly feel our emotions, and emotions are experienced through feeling, okay? So, what I suggest is that for a period of time, you know, days, weeks, whatever is appropriate for you, go about really experiencing the emotions that you encounter throughout the day. Keep track of what emotions you experience in a day. You know, I was angry 10 times, I was happy 20 times, I was sad 4 times, you know, that kind of analysis, or it's not really here analysis, it's just keeping track, you know, noticing what emotions you experience, because, okay, there's two ways I recognize your astral being, is one, through your character, and two, through the emotions that you experience and you express. So this is a really good way to look in on the health of your astral body, by looking at what emotions you experience on a regular basis throughout each day, okay? So once you've done that and you get to recognize and to identify those emotions and the subtle aspects of each emotion, you know, emotions are not just kind of things, they're, they're you know, there's this whole continuum of the emotion emerging, you know, its fullness, and then it diminishing. So, once you are familiar with all that, you start to create emotions. And that's very easy to do. You know, start with something like happiness. 
you know think happy thoughts focus on those happy thoughts feel that emotion in your body you know okay and that's one thing uh, beside uh, I meant to say in um, experiencing the emotions emotions have location in our body quite frequently um, like I said earlier the strong emotions we'll feel here you know uh, the more noble emotions we feel here in the chest um, anger you know lust you know all these uh, deeper uh, uh, not darker but uh, uh, more deeply colored emotions shall we say we feel in our gut or our groin um, there are some emotions that we feel in our shoulders like oh like it feels like we have the weight of the world you know try to find where each emotion occurs in your body this is very good information to have also emotions should never be denied you can try to deny an emotion but you won't succeed emotions are automatic you must experience them even really stoic people are experiencing all kinds of emotions on the inside not letting it show they still experience them and that's the key with emotions to really honor their existence to honestly experience them okay that's you have to always keep that in mind when dealing with the emotions never you know try to get rid of the emotion that way you get rid of the emotion by experiencing it first you know that brings it to the point where it can then diminish okay uh, so begin creating emotions create happiness sadness anger excitement uh, you know too many emotions to be naming here uh, just an infinite number of types of emotions of subtleties of grades of intensity uh, etc so create emotions for yourself until you can create any emotional state within yourself that you desire to create okay then comes the point of emo if you in looking at the emotions that you experience in a day if you see that you have the habit of this negative emotion and you don't want to have the habit of that negative emotion you can work on the habitual emotions that you manifest um, these are the emotions really that you're bringing up yourself if sometimes they are in response if you always respond negatively then that is a habitual emotion okay um, you can go about changing those the same way that uh, you go about changing your character in fact this weaves into the character transformation so perfectly and in ways that I think they must arise in uh, you know the practice they did for me um, in the practice of character transformation that you got to deal with these habitual emotions you know you've got to somehow take hold of them and say no that I don't want to do that anymore you know I would rather experience this emotional reaction I would rather experience this emotion most frequently during the day and this is where uh, you go about it okay the emotion arises you know it's always gonna arise you honor that emotion by recognizing that you're having it to begin with really feeling that emotion you know feel the depth of that emotion it can be very briefly it doesn't have to be a long drawn-out process but very briefly feel that emotion to its full manifestation now you have control you can exercise can control because at that point of having 
fully experience that emotion, you can decide to change that emotion because you're used to creating emotions. So you can create an alternative emotion. This doesn't deny the emotion that you have experienced. Instead, it takes it forward into something else. It's a creative process. Okay? So you, that emotion has rise. You have felt it to its fullest. Now you can insert your uh, chosen replacement for that emotion. Again, it's just like the character transformation work. Um, and begin to experience that different emotion. It's best that it not be like a polar opposite emotion, uh, but a modification of that original emotion. Um, something that carry, moves it forward uh, in a connected sort of way. Um, so instead of a response of anger, uh, uh, turn that into a um, a constructive offering of an alternative. You, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, something that, that is still touching upon your anger, because anger is a valid uh, emotion, um, but taking it in a different direction other than just the <clears throat> <clears throat> anger, but into some power, some energy into this alternative um, to uh, alternative um, so it's like someone uh, abusing their dog I get very angry instead of just getting angry um, I can introduce them to a different way of interacting with their, their dog you know I'll, I'll kneel down and, and touch their dog and be friendly with their dog and etc you know so, something constructive out of this anger. Uh, and this can apply to any emotion whatsoever. Okay? And how much, how much, <clears throat> excuse me, how much energy we give to the emotion. So, emotions can be very briefly experienced to their fullest and then let go. We don't have to hold on to emotions. We don't have to beat the emotion to death. In other words, you know, it can be fleeting as long as we experience it. We truly, deeply experience it. We can simply let it go. And then is a good time to have, you know, an emotion to replace it with. You let go of this anger and come up with something else. You know? Okay. So, I think that's about all I have to say on this subject at the moment. So, I hope that uh, helps you in some way. So, please do leave me your ideas for future videos and we'll see what comes up. Bye-bye.